All right, let's look at question number nine. Uh, it's very similar to one that occurred earlier in the test. It says this equation, all right, this is a quadratic. Here's your a value, k, your b value, 3, and your c value, 1. It has exactly one solution. All right, find the value of k. So one solution tells us the discriminant will be 0. When the discriminant is 0, a quadratic will have only one solution. So here's a discriminant. We need to substitute your b, a, and c values. b is this 3 here, so that goes here. a is the k. k represents some number in front of the x squared. So some number, so we put k in here, and c is 1, so here. 3 squared is 9, minus 4k when you multiply that. Um, then you can move the 4 over to this side, the 4k. So plus 4k plus 4k, 9 equals 4k. Then you can divide both sides by 4, and you get this. That is your value of k. Number 10. Uh, we have, it says, let f of x equals 2x plus 1. So it's saying there is some function f of x, and it's going to be this equation. That equation you should be very familiar with. This is just a line. All right, mx plus c, m, so your slope is 2, c, or b, sometimes it's called, is your y-intercept, and it's plus 1. So let's graph that line, because that's what a asks for. On the grid below, draw the graph of f of x, that means of this function. And it says 4 is 0, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 2. So it wants you to draw the graph, but only in this domain. So this is a line, and if you graph that line, it'll go forever, because lines go forever, unless the lines are restrained by a domain. So this line will not go forever, because it's saying we only want the line between 0 and 2. Okay? So here is that line. How did we get that? This value, 1, is a y-intercept, so here's our y-intercept. This value, 2, is a slope, so this means rise to run one. So from here I'm going to go up two, and I hope you weren't counting squares because the values are here, one, two, three, four. So to go up two isn't to go one, two, it's to go one value and the second value, right? So up to one, two, and then over one with the slope, because the slope is two, so then you just go over one. Okay, so there's that line. And I didn't put arrows, I stopped it where I said it said from 0, so here from 0 all the way to 2, 2, all right, and it's a uh, closed circle, 0 to 2. Now, it says let g of x equal f of x plus 3 minus 2. So that means g of x is a new function, a new graph on here, and to get the graph of g, we take the f function and we do this transformation on it. This is an easy transformation, it's just a translation. Uh, horizontally and vertically. So this tells us that your f function is going to move not plus 3 but minus 3, so minus 3 means to the left and then minus 2 here which is the vertical piece and it's going to go minus 2 on the y, so down 2. Alright, so how can we graph the new line or the new piece of a line because again it says on the grid graph g of x but only between negative 3 and negative 1. So it, it's going to be a little segment just like this one. So again we're moving minus 3, minus 2. So I'm going to start here, minus 3. No, actually I'll start here. 1, 2, 3. And then minus 2. 1, 2. So that's f of x. Oh, okay, a couple more things appearing. I wrote g of x a little bit bigger so we can see it. Alright. Oh, okay. Anyway, so this point moves 3 and down 2. And this point is also going to move minus 3, down 2. So 1, 2, 3, and then down 2. 1, 2. Right? So you have to know how that uh, transformation or this translation works. Minus 3, minus 2. Minus 3, minus 2. Minus 3, minus 2. And just by moving this first point and the last point, I've ended up in the exact right locations right here and right here. The domain says negative 3 to negative 1, so it only wants us to show us between negative 3 and negative 1. And it just happened that that is what happened when we move those points perfectly. Great, there we have the graph.